let us put ourselves in the holy presence of our Lord. Our dearest Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things possible. We are grateful for all the blessings you are pouring upon each one of us, despite the challenges we are all currently facing. Thank you for blessing us today with the wonderful opportunity to meet virtually and learn together in the awesomely exciting webinar. May your blessings of wisdom and guidance be upon us all through the sharing and impartation of knowledge and skills by our resource speakers, facilitators, and moderators. May all of us learn together, upgrade our competencies, and capacitate us to be the help in the development of our learners' lives and communities in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we now humbly commit every part of this webinar to you, as we all bring you the glory, honor, and praises for your kingdom and holy name's sake. All this we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippine College of Physicians through the Committee on Media Communication and Health Forum presents its bi-monthly lay forum to promote the advocacies and mission of the college and its component and affiliate societies. An avenue of accurate and up-to-date conversations with the media and the general public with timely and diverse topics covering vital public health and medical information straight from the experts in a platform that is convenient accessible and highly engaging welcome to the PCP Health Forum everyone. Welcome to another Health Forum of the Philippine College of Physicians. I am Dr. Francis Gail Toralba, member of the Media Communications Committee, and I will be your moderator for this Health Forum. Maraming salamat po sa regular viewers and sa continued support mula sa aming media partners at mga masugid na tagapagsubaybay ng PCP sa social media. In the Philippines, there are different micronutrient deficiencies Pero ang anemia ang isa sa mga kailangan pong i-address. So our health forum for this morning is about an interesting topic, demystifying anemia, separating facts from fiction. 
Before we start, let us all hear our welcome message from the incumbent secretary of the PCP Board of Regents and the president of the Philippine College of Chest Physicians, Dr. Imelda M. Mateo. Good morning, Dr. Good morning, Dr. Thank you so much for the introduction. Just some disclaimer and correction. I'm in the, I am the immediate past president of the Philippine College of Chest Physicians already. Oh. And of course, uh, the um, soon to be the vice president of the college. Okay, so the Philippine College of Physicians has always been in the lead in advocating health for the adult Filipinos from the spectrum of prevention to cure and rehabilitation. We put importance in educating and informing not only our physicians, but even the patients and the public on diseases that will have an impact not only in the, on the individual, but the country as well. Common ailments that we encounter frequently may have been taken for granted and that not much importance is given. One of these conditions is anemia, in particular, iron deficiency anemia, which is one micronutrient deficiency that needs to be addressed because this has an impact on economic productivity and national development. But there are other causes of anemia that we should all be aware of. Aside from nutritional causes or nutrient deficiencies, due to insufficient intake or poor absorption of nutrients, other factors that may cause anemia are inflammation and chronic diseases, malignancies, infections, gynecologic and obstetric conditions, and inherited blood cell disorders. Due to the need to address anemia and its consequences, we need to be educated on the different facets of it, how it develops, how it is diagnosed and treated, and its overall impact on health. Misconceptions on it should be corrected. Hence, information of the facts and fictions about anemia should be discussed further and disseminated to the general public and healthcare professionals. For this month's health forum, one of our fellows, Dr. Santos, who, is, who will be properly introduced in a while, has graciously accepted to discuss and enlighten us and correct the misconceptions about anemia. In behalf of the officers and the Board of Regents of the PCP, I welcome everyone to this health forum. Good morning and let us all stay safe. God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Mateo, for uh, that uh, beautiful introduction. So to educate us more, we have invited a speaker who will update us on what we need to know about anemia. So it's an honor to introduce our speaker. She is the Board of Regents and a fellow um, and a fellow of the Philippine College of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine, also a fellow of the Philippine College of Physicians, and the chair of the of the Committee on Advocacy. Let us all welcome our speaker, Dr. Maria Clarissa M. Santos. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. I would like to thank the Philippine College of Physicians for inviting me to give a lecture for today's Health Forum. I'm Dr. Maria Cariza Santos, here to discuss all about anemia, which is one of the most common conditions of the blood. Let's first begin by discussing what the blood is. So the blood is a specialized body fluid circulating in our arteries and veins. It has a lot of functions. First, it transports the oxygen and nutrients to all parts of the body. It forms blood clots to prevent excessive blood loss when we have injuries. It carries cells and antibodies of the immune system to fight off infections. It brings the waste products to liver and kidneys for excretion, and it regulates our body temperature. It is made up of two components. One is the cellular elements composed of the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets, and the plasma, which is the liquid component of the blood. The cellular elements, the white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets are developed from maturation of the stem cells and are produced in the bone marrow in a process called hematopoiesis. Each blood cell has its own function. We will be 
focusing on the red blood cell or erythrocyte for today. The red blood cell is the most abundant cell in the blood, making up around 40 to 45 percent of the blood volume. It contains a large protein called hemoglobin, which help carry the oxygen to all parts of the body and transport carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of body metabolism from the tissues to the lungs to be exhaled. Thus, RBCs are valuable for its oxygen carrying capacity. The red cells have an average lifespan of around 120 days. Then they are removed from the circulation. The quantification of the three blood cells is done via a basic laboratory test called the complete blood count or CBC. We often encounter this in our diagnostic workup during pre-employment uh, examination, during our annual PE, and during our checkups with our doctor. Over the years, the test has significantly evolved from the old manual counting method using the slide and our trusty microscope to what is known now the current method method of automated analyzers. So in steady state, when the red blood cell production is balanced with the red cell destruction, we have a normal hemoglobin, hematocrit, and RBC count. So normal ang ating dugo. However, when there is imbalance in the production and the destruction or losses, then we develop anemia. What is anemia? No? Anemia comes from a Greek word anaemi, which means lack of blood. It is often defined as a reduced absolute number of circulating RBCs or a condition in which the number of red blood cells and consequently their oxygen carrying capacity is insufficient to meet the body's physiologic needs. Accordingly, the World Health Organ organization or WHO has set the diagnosis of anemia as hemoglobin of less than 130 for adult males, hemoglobin of less than 120 for non-pregnant women, and hemoglobin of less than 110 for the pregnant patients. Globally, there were 1.76 billion prevalent cases of anemia in 2019, causing 50 million years of life lost due to disability or YLD for that year. The largest causes are from iron deficiency, from the hereditary anemia, thalassemia, and sickle cell disease, and from a parasitic disease called malaria. So anemia is of global public health concern. Now, signs and symptoms of anemia depend on the chronicity of the underlying condition. For example, for massive bleeding, um, signs and symptoms will be predominantly that of hemodynamic compromise. So, pwedeng bumagsak ang blood pressure ng patient. No? The signs and symptoms of anemia can be nonspecific, related to the compromised oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. For example, um, of course, one of the most common uh, sign is pallor, pamumutla. Yung skin and mucous membranes uh, will be pale if the hemoglobin drops to as low as 80 to 100 grams per liter. So kapag mild anemia lang, for example, mga 100 uh, and above, pwedeng hindi pa makita sa itsura ng pasyente. So pag mababa na lang ng mababa, no? like 80 to 100. No? So part of the physical exam, we as doctors too, uh, we focus on areas where the blood vessels are close to the surface, no, to the skin, such as the mucous membranes, yung nail beds, at saka yung uh, palad or yung palmar creases. Kapag yung creases ng palad are lighter in color than the surrounding skin, when we hyperextend the hand, the hemoglobin is usually less than 80. So it's a very good indi indication na sobrang baba na ng hemoglobin ng pasyente. The rest of the symptoms may be nonspecific. Pwedeng sumakit ang ulo or headache, dizziness, 
Madaling mapagod or fatig, madaling hingalin pag naglalakad or may physical activity, at mabilis ang tibok ng puso or yung tinatawag natin na tachycardia. Yung mga additional symptoms or signs may point to a specific etiology. For example, yung anemia na tinatawag na hemolysis or madali at mabilis na masira ang red cells, Pwedeng in addition to pamumutla, maninilaw ang pasyente. Makikita yan doon sa conjunctive at saka sa palad ng pasyente. At magiging T-colored ang urine. There are several ways wherein we can classify the different types of anemia. Yung two most common classification are, number one, according to the red cell size or morphology. So microscopic, no? this is a laboratory uh, work. And number two, according to the underlying mechanism or etiology causing the anemia. So, if according to the RBC size, tinitignan namin mga doktor kung yung itsura ng red blood cell under the microscope ay maliit ba sila or yung tinatawag na microcytic, normal ba yung size or normocytic or mas malaki kaysa sa expected or yung tinatawag na macrocytic. This helps us quickly narrow down the possible causes para ma-tailor namin yung mga workup na kailangan gawin. Now, if according to the underlying mechanism, we divide the possible causes into three. Pwedeng dahil may decrease in red blood cell production, which can be hereditary or acquired. Pwedeng dahil mabilis masira ang red blood cells, yung tinatawag na increased RBC destruction, or dahil sa bleeding or blood loss. So ito, uh, dinidepik lang itong diagram na ito, yung classification of anemia if we combine these two most commonly used um, classification systems. So yung according to re the red blood cell size against according to the underlying mechanism or etiology. Now the diagnostic tests that we, that we do once we suspect that the patient has anemia will focus on number one, confirming the presence of the anemia. No? And number two, identifying the underlying etiology. This is very important for the treatment of the patient. So, of course, yung pinakauna na kailangan natin gawin, yung natakal ko na kanina, yung complete blood count. Kasi ito yung quantification of the blood cells natin. So, we will focus lang on the red blood cells. However, the CBC will also give us um, quantification of the white blood cells and the platelets. So basically, the CBC gives us information of, uh, regarding the three blood cell lines. Next is yung tinatawag na peripheral blood smear wherein we prepare a thin blood film on a microscope slide and then we review it under the microscope, checking each blood cell type. We examine the morphology, yung itsura. No? For the red blood cells, we check the variation of the red cell size or yung tinatawag natin na anisocytosis. As mentioned kanina, nakakatulong yun no? sa pag-diagnose ko ano yung klase ng anemia ang meron ng pasyente. Number two, variation of the red cell shape or yung tinatawag natin na poikilocytosis. So makikita niyo dito sa table natin, no? dito sa the right side of the slide, na yung iba-ibang shape ng red blood cell, if present in significant numbers uh, under the microscope, will offer diagnostic clues to the etiology of the anemia. For example, for iron deficiency anemia, the red blood cells will appear very small or yung microcytic under the microscope, maputla yung red cell or hypochromic, and yung meron siyang abnormal na red cell shape, yung parang pencil shape na yung red blood cells or yung tinatawag natin na elliptocytes. So mahalaga ang peripheral blood cell smear. Third is the reticulocyte count. Ano ba yung reticulocytes? The reticulocytes are immature RBCs that circulate in the blood for around one day before becoming full mature red blood cells. The reticulocyte count measures the degree of production of new red blood cells by the marrow. So it gives us an idea if the bone marrow, which is the factory of our blood cells, 
is responding appropriately to the anemia if nagko-compensate siya. Now, in some cases, we might need to do a bone marrow biopsy. Magsasample tayo ng bone marrow to further investigate the cause of the anemia. No? To clarify lang, ha, not all anemia cases will require bone marrow biopsy. Um, most of the time, a lot of times, a simple set of uh, blood tests will reveal the underlying etiology of the anemia. May specific indications lang na sinusunod kami kung kailan namin um, pinaplano or inooffer na mag bone marrow biopsy para sa further investigation of the anemia. Now, further testing will depend on the suspected specific cause of anemia. Yung targeted or yung suspected specific cause will be coming from the history taking and physical examination that we perform during the initial consult. Now, for the treatment of the anemia, an overriding principle is to initiate treatment of mild to moderate anemia only when a specific diagnosis is made. Selection of appropriate treatment is determined by the documented cause of anemia. So very important that we investigate and we discover ano ba yung reason kung bakit nag-anemia. Dahil nakadepende doon yung specific treatment that we will be giving. Uh, for example, if we discover that the anemia is because of nutritional deficiencies, we provide kung ano yung kulang, iron, folate, or vitamin B12. Now, for anemia secondary to chronic kidney disease, we give yung injection na tinatawag na erythropoietin and we assess kung kailangan ng patient ng dialysis. Now, blood transfusion is a part of treatment of anemia, but uh, not all anemia cases will be requiring blood transfusions. Um, we transfuse blood if the patient is symptomatic, severely symptomatic for anemia, or if the hemoglobin is less than 70 grams per liter. No, because it's the fastest way to increase the blood. But it's never the definitive treatment. Bridging lang siya while trying to find the underlying cause. So not all anemia cases will be requiring transfusion or will be needing transfusion. So now that we have given an overview of anemia, let's tackle some of the common beliefs or concepts about anemia. So, uh, these are some of the most common beliefs that I have heard from patients during clinic consults. First, the most common belief that all anemias are treated with iron tablets. Some of the patients, by the, by the time they come to the clinic, iron na sila, either given by another doctor or uh, nabili na nila, nag-self-medicate na sila. No? So, lahat nga ba ng anemias pwedeng i-treat ng iron? Mag-work ba ang iron sa lahat ng klase ng anemias? So, first, let's tackle ano ba yung iron deficiency anemia or IDA. Actually, it's the most common cause of anemia worldwide, affecting over one uh, billion people. So, medyo may konting logic naman no, for thinking na baka naman lahat ng anemias pwedeng uh, i-treat na lang ng iron. No? Actually, it's one of the five leading uh, causes of years lived in disability or YLD burden and is the first cause in women um, in a study in 2016. So, merong dalawang types ng iron deficiency. Yung absolute iron deficiency, kulang na kulang or nasa na yung total iron stores in the body. Na? Meron naman yung tinatawag na functional iron deficiency. Uh, yung body stores ng pasyente, adequate pa. Pero, hindi siya mamobilize from the body stores para magamit ng katawan for production of red blood cells. We usually um, encounter this in inflammatory states. Itinatawag natin na anemia of inflammation or anemia of chronic disease. Iron comes from absorption in the small intestine or duodenum from our diet. No? So, 
they, they are also coming in from iron recycled from old red cells. So actually, we recycle iron. Pag luma na yung red cells, past na ng usual lifespan na 120 days. So sinisira na yung red cells ng katawan para iligpit. Pero nire-recycle yung iron. Tapos bumabalik siya dun sa iron pool no, for reuse. So, ang iron is distributed uh, all over the body. Most, uh, uh, sa red blood cells, yung pinakamadami na iron content, around uh, over 2,500 milligrams. No? Um, sa muscle cells, or yung tinatawag na myoglobin, uh, 130 milligrams. Sa mga enzymes natin sa katawan, 250 milligrams. And then, the rest sa liver for storage. So the iron balance is regulated no such that the amount absorbed equals the amount lost. However, there is no physiologically regulated pathway for excretion of excess iron. Yung regulation natin ng total body iron is by regulating the rate of iron absorption. Wala tayong regulation sa excretion. We will be coming back to that later. Na? So dietary iron occurs either as heme iron from meat or non-heme iron from plant sources. Ano yung difference ng dalawa? Yung heme iron from meat, more efficiently absorbed siya, less susceptible to influences by other dietary components. Whereas yung non-heme iron, it's less efficiently absorbed and more susceptible to influence by presence of certain dietary components. For example, uh, co-administration with vitamin C will enhance the absorption of the non-heme iron. Presence of phytates naman, on the other hand, sa food will inhibit the absorption. The main causes of iron deficiency are either from increased iron demand. For example, for growing kids, dahil sa increased body uh, requirement, dahil may growth spurt sila during pregnancy. And during pregnancy. Uh, one, uh, second is from decreased iron intake from poverty or malnutrition or from fat diets. Third is from decreased iron absorption. So dun sa may mga problema sa gastrointestinal tract. For example, um, na-operahan, uh, may resection ng um, part of the gastrointestinal tract, uh, drug-induced, may inum ng gamot na nakaka-inhibit ng iron absorption. And lastly, from chronic blood loss sa, ating, sa, sa aming mga babae from a heavy menstruation. That's equivalent to increased blood loss, which is equivalent to uh, increased iron loss. Uh, from frequent donation, uh, from problems in the gastrointestinal tract causing either occult or overt eating. Now, um, who should be tested for iron deficiency? So, yung mga high risk for to develop iron deficiency. Um, patients presenting with anemia not otherwise explained by non-iron causes. Patients presenting with signs and symptoms suggestive of iron deficiency anemia. And irrespective of symptoms, those who are at high risk. So, yung mga pregnant patients natin those with acute or chronic bleeding, those with chronic inflammatory conditions, and those about to undergo uh, surgery or who has undergone surgery with a uh, considerable blood loss intra-op. Yeah. So again, as uh, mentioned, those who are known to be at high risk for iron deficiency should be also tested. Now, tests used to diagnose iron deficiency with or without anemia, syempre yung CBC to document the anemia. Um, as mentioned kanina, as discussed kanina, yung reticulocyte count. And then specific tests to document the presence of iron deficiency. So we have the ferritin, which is a specific and an effective, reliable test which is a, re a reliable indicator of iron deficiency. A decrease in ferritin is um, diagnostic of iron deficiency. So if the ferritin is less than 15 micrograms per liter, that's specific for iron deficiency. If less than 30 uh, micrograms per liter, highly suggestive of uh, iron deficiency. Now, ang limit lang nito is it can be influenced by the presence of other factors such as inflammation. Other supportive tests include serum iron and total iron binding capacity. And then the transferrin saturation. 
Now, ipapakita ko lang to. These are some of the other uh, highly specialized tests na maganda sana. However, um, hindi pa siya natin ginagamit no, in the context of clinic kasi um, hindi siya readily uh, accessible just yet. So here is a brief uh, some uh, here is a diagrammatic summary no of um the signs and symptoms of uh the different uh levels or stages of iron deficiency and the changes in the biomarkers um as we go through the different stages of iron deficiency no so umpisa na maintain ng katawan na normal lang hemoglobin habang um, meron pang iron stores. Habang pa-deplete ng pa-deplete yung iron stores, pababa ng pababa ba ang ferritin, hanggang sa eventually maapektuhan na yung hemoglobin, magiging overt iron deficiency anemia na. Now, now, treatment uh, would be optimization of the iron status. No? So, ano ba yung indications to give iron supplementation? Number one, to prevent iron deficiency anemia in those at high risk uh, for development of the IDA. No? And second, to actually treat the individuals already with symptoms and already with overt anemia caused by iron deficiency. Now, the choice of iron depends on the level of the hemoglobin, yung tolerance natin to the oral preparation, and the presence of concomitant diseases. So, yung iron supplementation can either be given as oral or intravenous. No? So, yung oral, syempre ang advantage niyan, still the frontline therapy for IDA. No? It's inexpensive, readily available, easy to use. No? So, Expected response, dapat uh, yung hemoglobin significantly will rise na within 3 to 4 weeks of starting iron. So, kaya uh, hindi dapat inuulit yung CBC mga after 2 to 3 days pa lang ng pag-inom ng iron. Hindi pa natin makikita yung epekto sa level ng hemoglobin. We usually repeat yung CBC mga 3 to 4 weeks, no? Siyempre, kailangan makita natin kung nagre-respond ang pasyente to the iron therapy. Huh? So, usually, we would need four to six months of iron therapy to uh, normalize the hemoglobin and to replete the iron stores. Now, uh, monitoring would be, as mentioned, no? so we repeat the CBC and from time to time, we repeat the ferritin. Side effects ng oral iron are usually gastrointestinal. No? So, pwedeng merong metallic taste, yun yung common na na-experience ng pasyente. No? Pwedeng may upset stomach, uh, mga ngasim. No? So, in some cases, we give it at, as alternate dosing na, no? especially if mild anemia lang or um, iron deficiency pa lang, hindi pa nauuwi into full-blown anemia. No? Now, uh, meron ding IV o yung sa suero na preparation ng iron. No? Uh, increasingly, we uh, use na the IV iron in practice. No? It's a viable alternative for um uh, oral iron. Not all patients will be needing uh, IV iron. Most of them, uh, sapat na yung oral. No? So ito yung comparison ng oral versus intravenous or IV iron therapy. May specific indications tayo sa pagbigay ng IV iron. No? So if we need rapid correction, um, for example, if the patient uh, is unable to tolerate yung uh, oral iron because of the gastrointestinal side effect. So here is a suggested treatment algorithm for iron deficiency. Na? So nakadepik dyan yung ating uh, pagbibigay ng iron, proper dosing, at saka yung proper monitoring. Now, we must all remember, no? however, yung management of iron deficiency anemia does not end with confirming the diagnosis and giving the iron therapy. No? Habang ginagawa natin yan, further investigation as to the reason behind the iron deficiency should be done. So this is to address uh, preventable and treatable causes and to detect serious conditions such as cancers in the earliest possible time. 
So now that we have given you an overview of iron deficiency anemia, balik tayo dun sa common belief. Now, do all anemias uh, are treatable? Uh, are all anemias treatable with iron? Well, as mentioned, IDA or iron deficiency anemia is one of the most common causes of anemia. Pero balikan natin yung natakel natin kanina na classification of anemia according to the underlying mechanism. Uh, we note here that there are other different causes of anemia such as um, nutritional deficiencies, bone marrow disorders, red cell destruction from membrane and enzyme defects. So if ito pala yung underlying mechanism of anemia ng pasyente, the iron will not resolve these anemias. No? So ito yung mga common na other conditions na minsan napagkakamala na iron deficiency based on the uh, size of the red cell. No? Yung iron deficiency, medyo kahawig yan ng thalassemia. Thalassemia is a hereditary condition uh, caused by an abnormal hemoglobin uh, production. Dito sa thalassemia, in fact, kabaligtaran, no? Marami silang iron, <clears throat> overloaded na sila sa iron. And uh, because of this, further giving of iron will not uh, solve it kasi nga genetic siya or hereditary. No? Other differentials would be anemia of chronic disease and other um, rare um, differentials such as uh, lead poisoning. So actually, not all anemias can be treated with iron. No? IDA, yes, again, is one of the leading causes of anemia globally. However, there are many other causes of anemia. So thorough history taking and physical exam, uh, we need to do that to determine the possible etiologies. No? Appropriate screening and testing for individuals at higher risk for iron deficiencies should be done. Now, I do recognize that uh, not all areas will have the tests for iron deficiency that I have discussed. No? So uh, one limitation also is a uh, financial constraint. What if the patient is not able to <clears throat> afford the iron testing. So, meron namang mga cases wherein we give therapeutic trial of iron. However, as mentioned, no, we expect an increase in the hemoglobin by the third to fourth week of oral iron. So, failure to achieve the expected response with iron should trigger further investigation. So, hindi dapat tuloy-tuloy na binibigay yung iron ng matagal na panahon kahit na hindi naman nag improve yung hemoglobin ng patient. Sa mga patients, hindi dapat tayo iwasan natin na mag-self-medicate ng iron ng tuloy-tuloy uh, for a long period of time nang wala namang improvement. No? Medyo babalikan natin yan later. Now, let's go to the next common belief. No? So, in relation to the first common belief, it's safe to self-medicate with iron tablets. It's harmless. Now, ito yung mga common reasons that uh, patients give um, when they explain why they self-medicate uh, with iron by the time they consult the clinic. Na? So, they, they, they give... Uh, they self-medicate with iron to try to alleviate the symptoms that they have, they have been experiencing. So most of them will say, ang doktora, nanghihina po kasi ako. No? So fatigue, madali po ako mapagod. So another common reason behind the self-medication is, um, hirap daw po kasing makatulog. Madalas kasing nagpupuyat dahil sa trabaho. Or low blood po kasi ako. No? Um, actually, when you think about it, ano ba yung big deal? Eh, Potential side effects lang naman would be gastrointestinal side effect. Not all will um, experience that side effect. No, Most of these side effects will be manageable. And in addition, there are newer oral iron preparations that are more tolerable. So, bakit hindi na lang nga tayo mag-self-medicate ng iron ng matagal na panahon? No? Um, well, let's go back to the iron cycle or the metabolism. No? Remember that iron absorption is well regulated and the body conserves iron with remarkable efficiency. We recycle iron from the old red blood cells. On the other hand, there is no physiologically regulated pathway for excretion. What little iron we lose, we lose through shedding of the skin cells, desquamation of the intestinal cells, 
when we um, defecate and via perspiration. Iron excretion via these mechanisms is usually minimal, mga around 1 to 2 milligrams per day. So, wala tayong way of increasing or upregulating our excretion of iron when we have excess iron in our body. Huh? So, we accumulate iron by yung mga hereditary hemochromatosis, some congenital anemias, some acquired clonal conditions, and by inappropriate iron supplementation. So we develop iron overload by continuously self-medicating iron. Now, ano naman ang big deal? Eh, ano ngayon kung sobra tayo sa iron? No? Iron, when present in excess amounts, um, such that the body stores, uh, the storage areas are unable no, to hold on to this iron, they will deposit in other organs, no? So they are toxic when um, the iron, the excess iron is toxic when um, deposited in certain organs, eventually developing organ damage, particularly in the liver, pancreas, the heart, and the endocrine glands. So uh, no, no, self-medicating with iron tablets is not harmless. Huh? Now next, um, you know, so self-medicating with iron, not entirely harmless. Ideally, again, thorough investigation and workup should be done. No? So if there's a recurring theme no, dito sa uh, discussion na to is we should always try to investigate as to the specific cause of the anemia kasi doon magta-target tayo ng treatment. No? So again, I'm sorry pa ulit-ulit, no, pero this is important when the anemia does not resolve with oral iron therapy after a few weeks, further investigation is warranted. Hindi dapat siya tuloy-tuloy na binibigay ng matagal na panahon kung hindi naman nag improve ang anemia. Now, next common belief, marami kasing nagtatanong nito, anemias are hereditary. Doktora, um, mamamana ba ito ng mga anak ko? Or, doktora, naman ako ba to sa aking mga magulang? Ha? Balikan natin ulit yung classification of anemia according to the pathophysiologic characteristic. No? So, merong, yes, merong mga hereditary forms of anemia such as the thalassemia, which is, again, abnormal hemoglobin production. Meron ding mga inborn or hereditary defect in the RBC membrane and in the RBC enzymes causing increased destruction of the red blood cells or hemolysis. However, there are a lot of anemias that are acquired. Hindi natin, hindi tayo pinanganak ng meron siya. We acquire or we develop these um, etiologies over the years. So no, not all anemias are hereditary. They are either acquired or hereditary. Next belief, anemia is a normal part of aging. Maraming nagsasabi niya, nagtatanong, no? eh, doktora, uh, hindi ba, kasi tumatanda na ako. Part yan ng pagtanda, bumababa talaga ang hemoglobin. No? Now, indeed, anemia is most frequent at older age. No? Around 17% prevalent, prevalence uh, by the time an individual reaches um, age 65 years or older. Prevalence ranges between 10 to 24 percent in older patients. It increases with age, reaching uh, almost 50 percent prevalence um, in men older than 80 years old. Malaki ang impact ng pagkakaroon ng anemia or low hemoglobin sa mga elderly patients natin because low hemoglobin levels are risk factor for development of cardiovascular disease, no? Um, cognitive impairment, insomnia, difficulty sleeping, uh, magkakaroon ng mood changes, papangit ang quality of life, magde-decrease yung level ng physical performance. Kung din mapagod, on top of mas mahina na dahil may edad na. Um, in addition, anemia or low hemoglobin levels, especially if severe, will increase the risk of falls or fractures and increase risk for hospitalization. 
evidence suggestive of anemia is also uh, there's also evidence that anemia is a marker for mortality for these patients now there are a wide range of causes or underlying mechanisms resulting in anemia among the older patients most of the time more than one factor or underlying mechanism is involved. Pwedeng dahil sa anemia from nutritional deficiencies, chronic inflammation or chronic kidney disease, or yung mga clonal hematopoietic disorders or yung mga bone marrow disorders na acquired, such as yung myelodysplastic syndrome, myelodys- uh, myeloid fibrosis, and the like. So actually, um, anemia is common among the elderly, but it's not a physiologic part of aging. No? There is increasing prevalence. Hindi siya normal part ng aging. Ha? Dapat, we still do work up to determine the underlying etiology for prompt treatment. Now, particularly challenging um, work up and uh, treatment or management uh, of anemia in older patients. For one, as mentioned, usually kasi more than one factor um, is involved. And in a relevant proportion of patients, um, initially, after the first set of tests, we hindi ka makakahanap ng underlying cause. No? Pwedeng in transition pa siya. Uh, hindi mo kagad mahuhuli yung uh, etiology. So those are uh, particular challenges in the anemia of the elderly. Now, another common uh, and the, uh, the last for this lecture, common belief that uh, we encounter is that anemia can be caused by lack of sleep. Uh, I, I think uh, at least every, each time na clinic ako, no, at least one patient will mention that um, when we uh, discuss the anemia. No? Sasabihin, ah, doktora, kasi po uh, puyat ako lately, night shift, no? uh, marami pong ginagawa sa bahay. No? So let's go back to the classification of anemia according to the underlying mechanism. No? So again, as mentioned kanina, uh, anemia can be caused by increased red cell destruction, decreased production, or blood loss. Wala among these groups uh, of underlying mechanisms me, um, yung lack of sleep or yung insomnia. No? So, bakit kaya na-correlate yung difficulty sleeping or lack of sleep with anemia? Ito kasi yung mga common symptoms ng sleep deprivation or difficulty sleeping. No? So, uh, fatigue, madaling mapagod, uh, headache, mood changes, no? uh, trouble concentrating. If you um, notice this, kahawig siya or similar siya no dun sa mga signs and symptoms of anemia that we have discussed kaya siguro na correlate na lack of sleep will cause anemia but no anemia is not caused by lack of sleep so this is the end of our discussion. So for today, we have discussed the definition and classification of anemia, basic workup and treatment of anemia, and the common beliefs regarding anemia. Thank you so much for listening to this discussion. And uh, again, thank you to the Philippine College of Physicians for inviting me to give this discussion on anemia. Thank you very much, Dr. Clarissa Santos, for that engaging and informative lecture. Dr. Na, marami pong interesado. Maganda po pala yung fact or fiction po na discussion dahil mas maitatama ang mga misconceptions po no, regarding anemia. So, um, Dr. Na, are you ready for the questions? Medyo marami po tayo. Interesting questions. So, I'll, I'll start with the first one po. So, good morning. For iron supplements, are they better absorbed before or after meals when taken per orem? Okay, um, thank you for that question. Actually, that's a very common question no? and um, very important instruction sa clinic when we are prescribing iron to patients. Ideally, it should be taken on an empty stomach for maximal absorption. I always tell my patients from 30 minutes to an hour before um, your next meal. However, we do recognize na ang isa sa difficulties 
in treating iron is yung gastrointestinal side effects with uh, iron tablets no uh, to the point na some patients would even uh, re- require IV iron para lang ma-correct yung iron nila um so in those cases we um allow the patients uh, at least a small amount of food para malessen yung gastrointestinal side effect okay pa doctor um, in relation to that po, my question, which type of ferrous supplement is the most na less irritable in the stomach? Yun po ba daw ferrous sulfate, meron daw ferrous gluconate, or ferrous hemorrhate po? Actually, puro mga ferrous salts kasi yan, no? Pare-pareho lang silang medyo irritable to the stomach, no? May mga newer iron preparations tayo na supposed to be less... Um, irritable to the stomach. No? May, I think I flashed one slide about the newer iron preparations. Okay, Dr. Um, another question. When is IV iron sucrose more preferred than oral iron supplements in hemodialysis patients? Um, that's another good question. In dialysis patients, actually, the recommendation, uh, by the way, um, dialysis patients are at high risk to develop iron deficiency because of multiple factors. No? Most of them will have other illnesses predisposing them to gastrointestinal bleeding, mga gastritis, mga ulcers, and yung mga blood loss from multiple blood extractions. Kasi, di ba, we, all, we often monitor yung blood cam, yung CBC, in uh, itong ito group of patients and yung mga blood loss from the tubing ng dialysis. No? Uh, merong target yan no, na they, they, we should correct the iron for T-sat less than transferrin saturation less than 30, uh, 30% and or ferritin of less than 500. Ang preferred for adult dialysis patients ay actually IV iron along with the um, standard natin na erythropoietin injections for our dialysis patients. So uh, there are there are specific laboratory parameters po doctora na, that need to be checked. That's why we really need to consult no uh, for further uh, testing. Uh, uh, another question is, what iron preparation po does not cause constipation? <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo, talagang trouble namin yan sa iron eh. <laughs> we always, ano na lang, um, instruct patients, um, high fiber diet, no? yung other, ano, uh, measures, high fiber diet, increasing water intake, no, to try to alleviate the constipation. And sometimes yung proper timing of the iron intake. Yes, okay. Ah, another question, doctor. For patients diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia, do they need to uh, be recommended to not have night shift? Ayo, this is work related, no? Except oh. call center agents or other healthcare workers. Yun. No common question yan sa clinic. No? I, I'm sure na encounter mo din yan. May mga patients na magtatanong ng hihingi ng medical certificate no? for night shift. Related yan dun sa kaya sinama ko dun sa fact versus fiction. Yung anemia uh, will be caused by lack of sleep. no? Actually, if the purpose of excusing the patient is because uh, yung thinking that yung lack of sleep or yung in, um, change in the sleep-wake cycle ng patient will cause anemia, then no. Yun nga lang, we can naman, um, if, lalo na um, if the patient is symptomatic for the uh, anemia, eh di ba yung anemia at saka yung interrupted na sleep-wake cycle can bo- both cause fatigue, uh, difficulty concentrating, panghihina, we can uh, use that reason na i-excuse muna yung patient from night shift while um, treating the anemia. Pero if the reason is uh, to excuse the patient is kasi nga mag-cause ng anemia yung lack of sleep, then no. Yes, but not directly related. Not directly related. It really affects their productivity, no? And if they're symptomatic enough to na meron mga ibang nangyayari, like nang may dizziness, yun nga po, may isipatigability. Oh, Pwede naman natin silang pa-excuse kasi kawawa naman kung animik na inimik na nga tapos magna-night shift pa. Yes, yes. Another question, Doctora. For nutritional anemias, particularly for vitamin D deficiencies, 
Is it safe and prudent to give supplements in those with high MCV without doing further work up in low resource or financially incapable patients? I love this question. That's a common ano kasi scenario sa clinic, no? Actually, yung uh, testing for vitamin B12 deficiencies and yung mga folate, hindi siya readily available even here, no, sa sa city. So, yes, I often do that actually, no? If there is uh, if the patient has elevated MCV, so making you suspect uh, megaloblastic anemia from folate or vitamin B12 deficiencies, I actually do a therapeutic trial of um, folate and vitamin B12. No? Very important, again, yung history taking. Um, with thorough history taking, ma-elicit mo naman eh, ano ba yung risk factor that will make you suspect na baka may folate deficiency in patient or may vitamin B12. No? Same with yung sinabi ko about the therapeutic trial of iron. We can give a trial of the folate and vitamin B12, but we should monitor yung response. No? Of course, na again, not after two to three days. No? So, hindi mo ba makikita yon. Reticulocytosis will begin and peak at two weeks. Tapos after nun, saka mo makikita ang nag improve na yung hemoglobin. Kung baga, yes, you can give, but monitor closely. Also, another clue na megaloblastic anemia siya from folate or vitamin B12, usually sila yung mga super elevated yung MCV. Di ba, ang normal na MCV is between 80 to 100. So, usually sa mga folate and or vitamin B12 deficiency, super high, 130s, 140s. Yung mga ganon, yes, you can give. So, um, that's a that's a common question po, no? especially for those who suddenly um, change their diet. No? Yung ngayon po, parang those who suddenly become vegans and then they don't eat any meat anymore. So, parang they think they have, they have to supplement right away po. No? Another question, doctor, how will um, I give iron supplements uh, and the target hemoglobin? Okay. Okay. So actually, um, as mentioned kanina sa discussion, syempre your target uh, for iron treatment, of course, number one is to normalize the hemoglobin. No? So for females, that's between 120 to 160 gram per liter. For males, that's between 140 to 165 grams per liter. The reason kaya four to six months tayong nabibigay ng iron therapy is hindi tayo tumitigal once na nag-normalize yung hemoglobin. Ang next ano natin goal is to replenish yung iron stores. Kasi by the time kaya sila nag-anemia, nasa idna yung na iron storage nila sa katawan. Lagi ko sinasabi sa pasyente, yung bodega mo ng iron, ubus na. So hindi tayo titigil once um, nag-start, uh, na, nag-normal yung hemoglobin. Kaya up to six months siya kasi nire-replenish na natin yung iron stores. Now, um, pag nag-history ako sa patient as may previous intake ng iron, I always ask anong particular preparation, um, anong brand, kasi iba-iba sila ng iron content. Ang what we are after is ano yung elemental iron content. No? Um, usually, traditionally, between 100 to 200 uh, milligrams elemental iron. Now, merong bagong concept, no? Actually, kasi nga dahil ang sakit-sakit niya sa chan. Kapag mild lang yung anemia or may iron deficiency, depletion pa lang, pero hindi pa siya nag anemia you can give it as alternate day dosing. No? Meron kasi yung concept, may tinatawag na hepcidin block. Traditionally, pag binibigay kasi natin na siya ng um, high dose ng araw-araw, yung subsequent doses, binablock na siya ng iron uh, metabolism natin na upregulate yung production ng hepcidin. No? Yung hepcidin yung negative regulator kasi ng iron uh, absorption natin. So, pa counter productive bigay ka ng bigay hindi na niya na-absorb yung ano yung uh, subsequent doses so for patients with uh, mild anemia or iron depletion pa lang alternate dosing uh, is usually uh, yung ano na natin uh, trend nowadays no friendlier to the stomach less side effect happy tayong dalawa ng patient at saka tayong mga doctor yes doctor now we really have to ano eh um uh, inculcate parang compliance no sa ating patients kasi pag meron silang nararamdaman na iba they stop it right away pero guro mm-hmm. maganda that they in, also inform the doctors right away if there are any 
um, side effects. So, Dr. Ra, another interesting question. Is there a way to differentiate iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia uh -huh. if you don't have serum ferritin in the lab? Okay. The only available resource in our laboratory is CBC, peripheral blood smear, and reticulocyte count only. Okay. Meron tayo nung tinatawag na Mentzer Index, no? You compute it um, by dividing yung MCV over the RBC count, na no? Usually, sa thalassemia, it will be less than um, 12, no? Mas mataas pag iron deficiency. Um, usually, ang clue mo dyan, pag thalassemia sila, mababa yung M super baba ng MCV. Minsan, nasa 40s to 50s pa nga, no? Tapos makikita mo, mababa yung hemoglobin and hematocrit, pero hindi uh, compatible yung RBC count. Mataas siya. Supposed to be, dapat halos mantay-pantay sila, di ba? Pag mababa yung hemoglobin and hematocrit, dapat yung RBC count mo medyo mababa din. Usually, sa iron deficiency, although mababa din yung MCV nila, nasa um, higher end, mga... Di ba, 80 to 100 ang MCV. Siguro mga nasa 70s lang sila. And of course, again, sirang plaka ako. No? Laging history taking. No? History taking pa rin. Um, family history. no Some of them aware sila na, ay yes, Sora, yung ganito, ganito, pinsan ko, yung um, mommy ko, yung tita ko sa ganitong side of the family, merong um, ayo at anemia. Or um, maganda din, balikan mo yung mga previews na CBCs ng patient. Ang thalassemia, uncomplicated by other causes of anemia, persistently mababa yan, pero more or less stable. Nasa narrow range. No? Um, chill lang siya. Kung baga, kung, kare, kung 100 lang, kita mo naglalaro lang sa ganon. Pag iron deficiency, pag may nabalikan ka mga CBC, usually makikita mo yan uh, in the past, normal pa siya. Tapos, eventually, bababa na siya ng pababa. Lalo ngayon, di ba, doktora, uso na yung mga APE. So, may mga halungkat at mahahalungkat ka ng mga previous CBCs ng patient. So, important, no, for those who are working, if they have their annual APEs, talagang nakafile yung mga lab results, no, para easier for for doctors to see the changes. Especially ito nga po, no, usually sa APE, um, CBC lang yan at urinalysis yung the the ano the parang bare minimum so you see the lacking mikita and there are other components of the the CBC that we also need to check in platelet count and all the other spot no? uh, so di ba yung ferritin hindi kasi talaga siya available sa lahat ng parts of the country so of course you will be limited dun sa work up mo at saka medyo mahal siya ha ang exactly. um, ang um cheapest na nakita ko but that was years ago mga 600 pesos pero usually mga at least a thousand pesos ang ferritin eh so syempre kung kulang sa budget yung patient mahihirapan tayo sa work Another question for Dr. Ra. Clarify lang daw, for CKD or chronic kidney disease patients not requiring dialysis, pwede naman daw po yung aura. Ano po? Um, ah, yes. yes. Uh, we, we do give that. Basta, basta make sure, ha, na talagang iron deficiency siya. Yes, yes. So, for those who uh, who are planning to self-medicate, siguro, again, I think repeatedly na sabi ni Dr. Ra, we do not self-medicate, the better to consult Um, physicians before starting any supplement. Uh, another, um, I think, a question or a comment. I heard of a case wherein a patient was found to have increased iron due to oral supplement. Since natural excretion of iron may not adequately address this issue, how do we go about treatment? Ayun. Parang more of iron overload. Pa the iron part. overload. Uh, nagkaroon ako ng ganyang patient. Uh, she self-medicated for a long period of time. I'm not talking weeks, as in years. No? So by the time she consulted, the ferritin is already 5,000. Yeah. So, may two ways of addressing iron overload, whether hereditary or secondary, no? So, pwedeng, di ba, iron is, um, the blood is rich in iron. In fact, doon yung pinakamadaming content ng iron sa blood pool natin. No? So, if you take out um, blood, you're taking out iron. So, ang isang way is to do therapeutic phlebotomy. Although ito, pwede to sa mainly sa mga hereditary iron overload or hereditary hemochromatic chromatosis kasi presumptively yung CBC nila normal. Hindi to pwede sa mga patients na um, anemic 
Tapos hindi naman iron deficiency yung ano nila, yung cause of the anemia, pero nag-self-medicate sila. So, syempre, hindi sila candidate for therapeutic phlebotomy. So, sa ganitong cases, what we do is yung tiyatawag na iron chelation therapy. No? So, merong gamot na we can give to the patient para ma-force excrete yung excess iron. So, may tatlong preparation yan. Yung isa, yung pinakaluma, IV preparation. No? Actually, siya yung cheapest, pero may pagka-tedious kasi it has to be given uh, as IV infusion 8 to 12 hours. No? So, medyo nakaka-interrupt ng activity and work ng patient. May dalawang newer drugs na iron chelating drugs na oral form. Kaya lang, medyo may kamahalan siya. Kaya nga pa ulit-ulit kong ine-emphasize na uh, huwag mong self-medicate ng matagal na panahon. No? Kasi uh, masakit sa bulsa na mag-treat tayo ng iron overload. No? In addition to, dagdag na gamot yan. Yung mga side effect. Lahat naman ng gamot may potential side effects. Doctor, alam ko marami pa talagang questions. Pero we'll just... Um, get three more questions na lang po, fast answers lang po. Uh, this one, what can you say about anemia and hypothyroidism? Uh, actually, um, iron deficiency anemia is commonly linked with hypothyroidism, even hyperthyroidism. No? So the abnormalities in the thyroid hormones affect our iron uh, metabolism. So we often find them together. So in a patient with hypothyroidism na may anemia, isama nyo lagi sa differential diagnosis of the anemia, yung iron deficiency. Okay. And then another question, alternative for blood products for patients who do not want blood transfusion. <laughs> okay, one specific example of Manchikova sweetness. Na? Um, dahil bawal sa kanila. Yes, yung, uh, because of the religion. And even... Um, Kaya hindi Jehovah, hindi lang gusto ng yeah. transfusion. Well, I can understand, no? No one wants to be transfused yeah. as long as possible, no? Um, actually, more of um, ano ba yung, uh, again, ano yung etiology ng anemia ng patient? No, if it's iron deficiency for uh, patients who do not want blood transfusion, especially may mga Jehovah's Witness, actually may mga guidelines yan, may mga recommendations. No, we give iron, preferably we give it as IV, no, para faster correction, along with erythropoietin to further stimulate the production of the blood cells. No? So always treat the underlying etiology para we can avoid blood transfusion. Okay. Okay, doctor. So, uh, down to the last question. Tapos merong konting related. Uh, ano na lang. Uh, I commonly hear that you cannot give iron supplements in patients with infections. Would it include active pulmonary tuberculosis patients, which is common here in the Philippines? And yung major related, what's the indication in giving iron treatment versus folic acid alone? Okay. Um, kasi you should, anemia is quite common in uh, tuberculosis patients. No? Kasi um, TB is an infection. So meron tinatawag na anemia of inflammation. No? Ito yung functional uh, iron deficiency na tinatawag. For patients with anemia of inflammation commonly because of infections, uh, what uh, the, the pathophysiology actually is most of the time, yung iron stores are sufficient. Yun nga lang hindi siya ma-mobilize no? from the body stores to the iron pool para ma-utilize ng katawan. Uh, ang explanation ko lagi dito sa clinic sa patient, hindi ko alam kung baka mas malabo. No? So, parang sabi ko sa, sa mga patients, imagine mo yung katawan, parang kang may bodega tapos meron kang tindahan. No? Sa anemia of inflammation, nakapadlock yung iron mo dun sa bodega. Hanggang sa naubos na yung nakadisplay. So meaning yung readily available iron. Pero hindi ka makapag-display ng bagong iron kasi nakapadlock yung, ano, yung, yung iron. So actually, giving iron will not, uh, parang ano lang siya, no? hindi rin siya may-utilize kasi papasok lang din siya dun sa, ano, sa body stores. No? So pag anemia of inflammation, although most of the time, uh, may concomitant iron deficiency din yan. For example, for TB patients na disseminated, may gastrointestinal involvement, it's not uncommon for them to develop iron deficiency from yung mga occult GI bleeding. Always check, baka naman merong concomitant na iron deficiency. So hindi naman siya like contraindicated na indigat. 
What is the indication for giving iron treatment? Well, again, it depends on what is the suspected underlying etiology. No? Um, of the two, iron deficiency is the more common. No? For folic acid, may mga ano din yan, may mga risk factors. For example, malnutrition, alcoholism, no? those are risk factors for folic um, deficiency. Now, for patients na merong um, resection ng gastrointestinal tract, it's not uncommon for you to find multiple nutritional deficiencies. Uh, meron akong ganun patient may iron deficiency na siya may folate at siya may vitamin B12. So you have to give um, all. No? Yes. So, Dr. Ra, thank you very much for answering all our questions and for giving a very uh, great lecture po. No? You are always uh, an invited speaker and we always look forward to your uh, talks and hopefully we can invite you again pa Dr. Ra for um, uh, another session kasi maganda po talaga yung mga topics po, no? Uh, in hematology. So, um, uh, in behalf of uh, PCP, we thank you very much for joining us today and we hope to uh, learn for, from you in the future. Um, uh, any final words for Dr. Ra? Thank you, Dr. Turalba, for a very engaging discussion and a Q&A forum. Thank you to our attendees. No? So, I enjoyed the questions. Very important and very um. Uh, timely uh, questions. Thank you. And thank you uh, once again to the Philippine College of Physicians for this invitation. It's always a pleasure. We'll see you again. Thank you, Dr. La Clarissa Santos. Before we end, uh, I would like to um, call on um, uh, the uh, um, uh, like to call on uh, Dr. Jasmine Reyes Igama, the co-chair on Committee on External Relations and the vice president of the Philippine College of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine, to give her closing remarks. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, in behalf of the Philippine College of Physicians and the Philippine College of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine, we would like to thank our audience hoping that we have unraveled the myth and it being better ma understood and managed. Sabi ko nga, I could relate to what uh, Dr. Klang is saying. Kasi lahat yata ng hematologists, ganyan na aming experience, the same questions, including siguro yung pagpaba ng blood pressure, low blood, sasabihin nila, and then they would self-medicate with iron pills. Uh, thank you, Dr. Clarissa Santos. That was uh, a very, very uh, organized lecture, and Dr. Francis Gelto-Ralba for a job well done. Congratulations, and maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng nakinig. Uh, sana may susunod pa. Thank you very much po. Thank you very much, Dr. Igama, for your closing remarks. Um, let us all remember that not all anemias can be treated with iron. Huwag po tayo mag-self-medicate. Mabuti po na magpa-check up muna sa inyong mga doktor. And then further investigation is warranted if anemia does not resolve with iron supplementation. So in behalf of the Philippine College of Physicians, we would like to thank Dr. Maria Clarissa Santos for this uh, wonderful lecture this morning. I hope everybody... Um, uh, learned a lot and um, uh, inaanyayahan po lahat na umaten sa susunod na PCP Health Forum every 10 to 11 a.m. kada Tuesday po ito at tuwing Sabado naman po ang PCP sa Radio Veritas. I am informed kada 9 to 10 a.m. Salamat po sa pag-aten sa ating PCP Health Forum. Maaari po itong panuorin muli. Uh, ang episode na ito sa PCP Facebook page. So abangan po natin ito at ang mga susunod na PCP Health Forum. Stay healthy and stay safe. The Philippine College of Physicians through the Committee on Media Communication and Health Forum wishes to thank its media partners, social media followers, and participants. See you again next time here on the PCP Health Forum.